That is Hot Hot Heat. They're a yes. new band. Uh, they're, where are they from? They're from Vancouver, and they're described as Canada's funk pop answer to the Strokes. That's a ridiculous I statement. I think most mean anything funk the pop. Nowadays, but... We have Philip Weiss with us, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted. He's currently appearing in the second series of 24, which is on every Sunday night on BBC Two. If you're lucky enough to have BBC Three, you can flip channel straight away and get the next week's episode. But, of course, if you do that, you're only ahead for one week, and the next week BBC Two means nothing to you because you've seen it already and you only get it on BBC Three, which is kind of frustrating. That's where I went wrong. That's why I've missed an episode. That's not the only place you went wrong, let's face it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Philip, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for inviting me. I'm not sure if I like you. Of course you like me. Are you the good guy or the bad guy? I'm confused. I'm I don't a know good guy. I'm a Brit. I'm a good guy. Yeah, but are you the good guy? Normally in American films these days, in American series, Brits are bad guys. Yes, but not this one. We're Thing, like the things new are Russians. changing. This is, uh, this is uh, reverse PC. Well, I'm casting. glad, because initially... He's a bad guy. And you think, well, he can't be a bad guy, because you play a Middle Eastern guy, well, or, or, you know, with parents from the Middle yeah. East, and you think, well, no, they wouldn't make that, because it's too obvious. But then you think, well, no, maybe they're doing the old double bluffer, or is it a triple bluff? I, I don't know where I am in the bluff stakes. A good guy would drive Noddy's car, that you, big red car. To make it look safe and easy. Well, of course. Um, and, but, see, I didn't like the dad, the guy who plays your soon-to-be father-in-law. His beard is too neat. <laughs> that's, a, that's the neatest beard I've seen in my life. I'll tell you a little secret, episode 9 and 10, it's a fake beard. No, don't give it too much away. <laughs> no, 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 because he went to, he got another job doing something else and he had to shave the beard off. So he, he went to come a fake back beard. And he had to, they stuck on this Where beard. else do you get this kind of inside gossip on <laughs> television? Secret. This is Secrets. unbelievably good stuff. <laughs> Quick, put a tape in, I'm going to want to listen to this one back. The beard is a fake beard. Episode 9 and 10, yes. Only 9 and 10, then he grew it back? Yeah. Or does he die? I can't say. You see, you see how... All right, let's try that plan. Yeah, OK. I don't care how the series ends. I've no. guessed the ending anyway. Yeah. Oh, you have? What happens then? Yeah, I can't tell you. It's a secret. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. So we don't, we're not bothered. We're not bothered. We don't care. Even well, if you were to tell us, it wouldn't well, excite us. Well, great thing in episode 15 mm. where... Uh, <clears throat> it's working! <laughs> <laughs> I, get all get... the girl, I get all the blonde girls ah, in one you, room. Yeah, you wish. And I tell them all my secrets. <laughs> hey, do you uh, get that, though? I bet you do people saying, can you just tell me what's going to happen? All the time. Yeah. But then it'd be no fun. They won't, they won't enjoy the show. It's all about not knowing what happens next. Of course it is. Uh, uh, the first series was terrific. I was so hooked on the first series. The second series, I think I'm enjoying even more, which is remarkable seeing as the, the central conceit, the premise, this 24-hour span in a man's life, right. is kind of the sort of thing you think, well, that, that's a device that could become hackneyed quite quickly, and yet it still feels fresh. Yeah, they've, they've done a good job here, because every, the stakes are even higher than they were last time. Yeah. The city of L.A., all those movie stars potentially are going to die. So when it comes to Series 6, he's going to have to save the entire universe. I guess. From, like, an angry god or something. Because <laughs> yeah, he's going to have to get bigger and bigger, isn't he? And, it? like, all these unborn children that have yet... To, all his siblings. I love uh, Kiefer Sutherland in the series. I think he's tremendous. It's some of the best work he's done. It must mm -hmm. be fun working with these guys, I imagine. He's great. He's a great guy. Do you get any scenes with Kiefer? Uh, not as yet. No, you see, you see how clever he <laughs> yeah. is at avoiding giving stuff away. <laughs> he's a smart man. He's a good man. He's a good fella. And met him. I've met him very briefly many years ago, and he seemed very nice back then. Um, I'm sure he still. He seems even nicer now, actually. He's a, he's great. He works hard, and we all he sets the bar really high, and we all rise rise up to it. Rise up to it. Um, and you have some good scenes with him. You're saying. Maybe. Oh, you see, <laughs> it's not playing the yes/no game, isn't it? <laughs> um, how long did you? Is the film? Is did, have you finished filming the? They're on episode. I was there last week, and uh, they're on episode twenty-two. Wow! Because I remember last year when I was getting hooked on it, I was trying to find out if I could get the series from a friend who lived in the states, and they still hadn't finished filming them all yet. No. So they're turning them out as we speak. Yeah, twenty-four. They just actually finished writing episode twenty-four. Of course, if you were to take all the American commercials out, as indeed we do for the British BBC Television, the finest broadcaster in the in the known world. Um, it's actually only about 45 or 48 40, minutes. So missing. it's not a 24-hour period. It's more like a 22-and-a-half-hour period. That's when Kiefer eats and yeah. takes a pee break. Has a little nap yeah. and recharges his mobile phone. They're the kind of pedestrian points people make, though, aren't they? They say, well, it can't really be happening. The everlasting battery on those phones. <laughs> um, it must be fun being part of something which is this big, though, which is so kind of long-awaited and, and excited. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was... Uh... It was literally, I was back here last summer and it was a phone call, they want you to audition. So I put myself on tape. In, uh, I was visiting my brother in my niece's bedroom with all her cuddly toys everywhere and I sent the, sent the tape out and two days later I got a phone call and they wanted me in LA and there I was hanging with the guys. And so where did, you, where did you live in, in this country before you went to the States? Pearly. 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 Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Good Lord. That's quite a leap to make, I thought, from Pearly and then suddenly you're on a sound stage in Los Angeles. So. I know. I know. 24. Hard work. And so your base is over there now. Are you going to stay living in the States when this work is? This For the moment. I mean, I'm back here. I'm taking some meetings as well. I'd love to do, you know, a British movie or a good play. 
OK, oh, yeah. now, you, what, what's your origins? Where are your parents from? My mum's French okay. and my dad's Maltese. OK, because you look like they are possibly from the Middle East, hence you get in the part there, um, in, in the show. In America, how do people react to you if indeed they think you are, they've seen you on the show, they think you are of Middle Eastern origins? Is it strange being out there with the current climate and all? Uh... I try, I try not to get involved in that. If anything, they think I might be Hispanic, I might be Mexico. Be but I don't, I'll blow, I'll blow. Presumably, if you're out there, though, it's even worse to be thought of as French at the moment, isn't it? Because <laughs> they don't like the French out there. Not at all, my mum's in the next room. Have, you, have you been anywhere and ordered freedom fries at the moment? Freedom fries, <laughs> I, had a, I had a freedom kiss the other day, which was <laughs> quite delightful. I kind of like the sound of free kiss rather than free <laughs> French kiss, because it, it kind of, you avoid the immediate tongue connotation, which is always, I think, a bit icky first thing in the morning. Um, so, you're doing great guns out there. I mean, it must be tremendous. Are you, are you involved with anyone? Do you have any part of the moment? Are you gay or straight, by the way? I'm straight. Okay, you're straight. You have to say that with your mum in the room, obviously. Uh, no, I'm, I'm straight. Until you, <laughs> until you come out with that. Yeah. You know, until you yeah. actually make it clear with it, possibly. Yeah. <laughs> mum, this is I shouldn't I have asked you that. I see you've, I've put you in an embarrassing yeah. situation with your mother in the room. There's nothing wrong with you being gay. I shouldn't have raised that with your mother present. I apologise for that. <laughs> How do I get into this situation? I don't know. He comes in here I'll bail you out and he's kept himself want. safely in the closet for years and then suddenly <laughs> I've outed him inadvertently. Yeah. And you know, OK, the French, they're quite a radical thinking people, yeah. as we know. Mm. They had the revolution, we didn't, but mm. even now I believe there might be some stigma. <laughs> <laughs> Philip, let's, I tell you what, we'll pretend that didn't happen. OK, mm. all right. Uh, you uh, see the game? See the game the other day? No, I, what, which game is that? Uh, uh, the England game. So you're getting all butch now? Uh, yeah. You see that now? <laughs> you're fooling no one now! We'll have a couple of pints later. OK, well, I'm assuming you are heterosexual then. Yes, that would be crazy. So presumably, having a hit show in America... It, Tons. It, you know, there must be ladies queuing up, I would have Loads thought. of totty. How wonderful that must <laughs> be. It's like a scene out of a hard day's night. I get out my... You know, come out my... And how old are you? Me, 28. He's 28 years old. Yeah. He's suddenly... He's, he's gone from pearly. Let's face it, no-one really wants to live in yeah, pearly. Exactly. You know, how your French mum must think they're in pearly, thinking I could be in Paris, <laughs> and I'm in gay pearly instead. OK, and there you are, suddenly, yeah. you're transported as if by magic, in Los Angeles, in a hit TV show, good-looking young man. Yeah. You know, <laughs> ostensibly straight. They're lined up outside. <laughs> but then I have to communicate to them, so that's always a little tricky. You have to talk. Yeah, I have to talk. But do you think, are people after, you know, your company and your time because you're in a hit show? Is it kind of that mercenary? Well, uh, initially, you know, it's always a good talking point. They come up and they're like, you're that guy. You're that guy off the television show. I go, yeah, have you got a cuter sister? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can go away. <laughs> no, you see, you see. Yeah, no, see. it's not about that. No. It's about the work. No, it's, it's about the art. Yeah, it's yeah. about the it's inner about the person arts. as well. <laughs> yeah, of course. OK, Philip, let's have some more music. Yep. And while the music's on, Philip is going to tell us what happens in 24. All right. And maybe we'll tell you as well. You listen to Radio 2. Uh, it's me, Jonathan Ross. I'm with Andy Davis. And our guest at the moment is Philip Reese. He's currently in the series 24 every Sunday on BBC 2. If you're not watching it, you should be. It's great fun. Um, a great show to make. Now, when you're making a show like that, when you're playing a character like that, and obviously, for the audience, we, we need to not know whether you're good or bad, whether you're on the, the, you know, on the side of, of Jack's bunch mm -hmm. or whether you're going to be one of the bad guys that he's fighting against. Do you know in advance, is it clear-cut for you, or do they keep you in, in sort of some sort of suspense as well? Well, at the beginning, they have a rough idea of where they're going to go with the show. Like, uh, the first five, six episodes, I knew. I knew roughly where we were going to go, and so did the writers. But then after that, Anything's up for grabs. So they know, I suppose they know roughly where they're going to end up with the... Uh, they have a the rough Bible, a rough sketch, rough outline, but, you know, they're not, they're not stuck to it. So as an actor, how do you then perform your part? Do you have to do, you do more than one take or do you just have to play it in a fairly non-committal, non-specific way? No, the directors usually ask for us to, uh, say, do a take with one particular intention, whether it be a, a villainous intention, and then we'll do another take where... I would be a good guy. Yeah, and so then they can choose in the edit. And then they'll choose in the edit. And, and I they guess do that then... with everyone in that scene, so then wow. you can play the scene any which way. So you're doing a lot of kind of over-recording for this show. Uh -huh. That's quite interesting. And does that make for a longer time? Is it a more arduous shoot, or is it fun to do? It's tough. It's hard, but, you know, you're working with really good actors, and you, you're invested in the material, the writing's good, and you're part of a great show. There aren't many out there. And at the end, Nina did it, is that right? Say that again. N Nina's the big, the big villain this time. Well, you know they shot two endings no, in the they? first season. I didn't know that. About the wife, uh, when the wife died. Because yeah. originally she wasn't going to die. And uh, Jack's, she would, Nina knocked her out and she was just unconscious. But they, f they felt that no, it would be much stronger if 
Nina killed Jack's wife. Were you a fan of the first series when it was going out? Did you watch it or were you No, not? I was in China, actually, with Dennis Hopper, believe it or not. Wow, what a great sound for a young man <laughs> yeah. of French and Maltese origin I was in China from Hurley to be able to say, I was in China with Dennis Hopper. <laughs> yeah, just, Let's just enjoy that for a moment. <laughs> you were in China with Dennis Hopper. With old Dennis, yeah. The old, wow. He's a good boy. And um, then you came back and they said, there's this show and you should catch up well, on Well, Dennis it. left to do the did, show. He was he in said, the first yeah, season. He said, well, I'm, I'll see you later, Phil. I'm going to go uh, work with Kiefer. I said, what's the show about? And he told me, I was like, that's interesting. So when I got home, there were still four episodes remaining of that season. So I checked out. I was like, that's a damn good show. And then I got the phone calls like four months later asking me to fantastic to do the thing on this. Um, now, let's talk about working on the show itself because uh, I heard there was some sort of weird talk going on. There's, there's a curse of 24. Yes, there is. What's that? And I was part of it. Uh, back in... Uh, October, November, and even December, a whole bunch of the cast just got uh, tragically ill. It was myself. I got this infection in my jugular vein. That's a, that sounds terrifying. I lost 20 pounds. I was in hospital for three weeks. It was touch and go you all know, the lots, way. Lots of people at home writing down now must get infection in jugular vein. That sounds like a great way of losing money. <laughs> it was a good one. You know, 20 pounds in three, that's better than the Atkins diet. <laughs> it was very expensive, though. I didn't yeah. have any health insurance. And what is that? An infection in the jugular vein? Well, I had this vein. dental implant in my tooth because I was in China, so all my teeth rotted, and then I came back here and I had tons of dental work to be done. Hold on a second. Just because you're in China, do your teeth necessarily <laughs> uh, work? Well, they did, they bad did. food or you weren't brushing enough? Uh, no, I floss daily, but... Uh, that sounds awful. I didn't go to dentist. That must have been really painful. Yeah, terrible bacteria so, uh, all over the body. A toothache that spreads down into your jugular vein. Jugular vein. Wow. Bacteria in the lungs. What? I was uh, I was a mess during the filming of Twenty Four. Yeah. If you see episode nine and episode ten, which I've we've lost... already made a note because there's a fake beard involved. <laughs> You've lost a lot of weight as well. I've lost 20 pounds. I would collapse between takes. It does sound to me like episodes 9 and 10 might be unintentionally comic. <laughs> but, you, but you know what? It's, it's all that method acting. You know? <laughs> so I'm, I'm... Um, and so did anyone else get this? So, uh, yeah, then uh, literally the week later, Kiefer fell out of his uh, trailer coming down the stairs and twisted his, busted his kneecap. Poor little thing fell out of oh, his trailer. Two <laughs> <laughs> Heavers on crutches. Oh, I poor little wait. Kiefer. <laughs> he, but, boy, he fell out of his trailer. <laughs> we I had the game of lollipop when we went to the doctor for being <laughs> we brave. We him flowers and <laughs> chocolates. Well, of course you do. He's the boss. You've got to yeah, keep him with it. Of course. Yeah. And, uh, and then the... Like a couple of weeks later, Carlos Bernard, who plays Tony Almeida. He's a good fella. Yeah, he, they're all good boys. He's a good guy. See that? He, still, he gave us one away there. <laughs> he was shooting hoops. Yeah, that's an he, American for playing basketball. Exactly, you know. and uh, twisted his ankle and oh, the bone, the cartilage oh, yeah, yeah, was all yeah, messed yeah, up. Poor little thing. You they're weak, you know. They're the, the old. Uh, These Americans, they've got no fortitude whatsoever. <laughs> You, OK, take the day off. You've got an infection in your jugular vein. Bloke fell down two steps getting out of a power van. They shut... That's pathetic. Path frankly, I've gone off him. I thought he was a hard man as well. We all wanted to be him, didn't we? Mm, and now yeah. you look at him thinking, yeah. like he twisted his ankle. Falling out of a trailer. But and then like, uh, Alicia, the daughter, she got bit by a cougar. Bit, now you see, that's, <laughs> that's fair enough. Like she went now, up there to stroke the cougar, and I guess she had some potatoes. She had some packet of crisps before, so the cougar... Smelt the crisps on her hand. Yeah, she, that's not the brightest movie in the world. Took a bite out of her. Uh, she's the one who plays Kiefer Sutherland's daughter in the show. With the large cleavage, yes. Okay, yeah. There aren't enough scenes of her running. <laughs> First series, she was running a lot. Yeah. Used to enjoy that. Yeah. She gets a taxi in the. Latter now, part of there's these no episodes. more running. She's sitting in a car all the time. Yeah, she knows what's up. Yeah, well, don't they realise that people tune in just for that kind of thing? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're a young straight man in Los Angeles with a hit TV show. You know, of course you know what I'm talking about. You know better than most. Who <laughs> are. Misses. You probably have people who turn around. You say before we say yes or no, do a little one for us. <laughs> Jog around my trailer. Have you got a trailer? I do. Much smaller well, one than. Uh, he's got a trailer. Yeah. I don't have satellite TV. Kiefer has satellite. What else does Kiefer have in his? Uh, uh, lots of steps from the satellite. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot more zeros on his. Uh, his but he's earned it. He studied. He's worked uh, long and hard in Hollywood and in the uh, acting process. Has become second nature to him. Where you're just a boy beginning. Yes. Essentially, you're stepping out. Where did you study acting? Here. At an American school called the Lee Strasberg Institute. We know of it. That's the uh, method acting, you know, mecca, basically. That, that'd be it. So, uh, yeah, studied there for a couple of years and got a transfer out to the States and uh, did more of that and did a couple of independent movies. So you are of the method persuasion? Yes, sir. OK. And, and this is, you, you think this is the best way to go? For the moment, I mix, you know, I mix and match nowadays and find what's, what best works for me. But, yeah, I draw on 
my past experiences. You go on sense memory. Uh, you know a lot about. I it. know about sense memory. You did a bit of acting in your time. No, I never did. I, well, all that. Well, I say I didn't, but I was no. in a very well thought of London University production oh, of Beowulf. This. <laughs> well, I played Wiglaf. <laughs> Heard this story. And the Scot Scotsman at the time, not that I remember my reviews, and my buddy said mm. the growing maturity of Wiglaf is well portrayed. And you know how I portrayed that you could learn from this. Please. Y young Wheat. <laughs> I left one end of the hall, <laughs> ran down the other end, and on the way, put talcum powder on my head. When I came back in, they thought, look at that, he's aged. <laughs> now, that's something you might want to try. Have you got a pen? <laughs> it worked a treat. Right there, Unfortunately, yeah. I did go in one morning, and just after the ceremonial rape scene, many of the Americans were leaving, and I walked in, I had to go, excuse me, partner, excuse me I've, got, I've been away 20 years, I've got to get back to the stage. And they were leaving. They are going, so, terribly sorry, we've double booked. <laughs> it was the Viking rape scene they didn't go with. Fair enough, not to everyone's taste. Especially not 11 o'clock in the morning in the Edinburgh Fringe <laughs> Festival. Um, let's have another track. We'll chat some more to Philip, and then we've got Gloria Gaynor yeah. waiting outside, so we're going to have to get rid of you after this. But Please. hang around. What are we going to play, Andy? We're going to play... We mentioned The Vessels. The Vessels. Del delved into my bag and found the new single, which is out on the 28th of April. It's called Don't Waste Your Time. Great band. So Kiefer Sutherland's the bad guy. Oh, uh, we're back. That was uh, The Vessels. Yeah, it's a great single from them. Um, I'm here with Philip Reese. He's going to dash off in a minute because you've got somewhere to go today, haven't you? I've got a wedding. My friends uh, Simon and Emma are getting married. Wow. So you'll be turning up there and you will be fighting those bridesmaids <laughs> yeah. off with a stick. I suggest you take a walking cane along with you for protection. Um, uh, Philip is currently in 24. He's also, I tell you what, I'm looking forward to This sounds good. The thing you've been making with Dennis Hopper. Mm -hmm. Flatland, uh, briefly before you dash off, tell, will you tell us uh, what that's about? It's, uh, we shot 22 episodes in Shanghai, in China. It's set in 2010. Fantastic. It's mm. a kind of The Matrix meets Crouching Tiger. And I'm this reformed mob lawyer who goes, works, who goes to work with Dennis in Shanghai. And, and it's set in the future. Do you wear futuristic clothing? No, I wear uh, some ancient Chinese clothing. Even well. better. So you're kind of playing a kind of uh, an, uh, an Asian guy from that part of the world this time. You're meant to be from China, from Japan? No, from New York. Well, no, that's confusing me. He's what are you doing here? Who's, who's, who's transported into this okay. ancient world and futuristic world? No, you don't know what it's about. <laughs> I do. and we You get to... didn't read the whole script. You only read your part, didn't you? You don't know what it's about. <laughs> New York future science old times. You're talking rubbish. You won't, you, know, you won't get anywhere. Next time, read the whole script, OK? I've been rumbled. Get the whole picture. <laughs> so who did it? 24, come on. The tea lady. Ah, there we go. That's exactly what I want to hear. So he brings it back home to his British roots. Yeah. No, he's French Maltese, but you mm. know, it's a, it's a good mix. Um, Philip, lovely to have you on here. Thank you so much for coming in. It was a pleasure. Good luck with the wedding. I hope it's not yours. Obviously, your friends. I hope it's a lovely day. It will be in Oxford. And I can't wait to see the rest of you working this. And also, I'm looking forward to this show. If I need to find out what it is for your <laughs> sake, uh, it's called the. Is it called, what's it called? It's called Flatland. Flatlands. At least you remember the title. We'll find out what it's about when it finally hits uh, British TV screens. Philip, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.